So what is Ethereum? The best way to understand Ethereum would be to understand the internet. Clouds and servers owned by giant companies such as Google, Facebook and Amazon are storing all of our personal data, behaviors, financial information and much more. Even this course and ReadBTC are stored on a controlled server by a company that charges a fee up front for handling the data. This type of setup was very useful in the recent years, as each of us could get any data stored and secured by paying a small fee. Also in recent years, we grew aware of more and more stories about hacking and unwelcome guests who can get access to your personal data. This means that anyone with the right knowledge can potentially leak, steal, or have influence over important information. But is the internet meant to be such a harmful place? Well, the answer is no. The internet is always aimed to be decentralized and to provide a digital freedom. Unfortunately, giants like Facebook have the ability to potentially influence even the American election. Ethereum is one of the recent technologies which aims to make the internet a better place. While Bitcoin aims to deliver decentralized solutions for online banking and payments, such as PayPal, Ethereum's main goal is to replace the main decentralized third parties on the internet who store and transfer data and financial instruments. Ethereum has been around since late 2013, when Vitalik Buterin released his statement about the Ethereum white paper. Several months later, a few hackers followed and joined the venture. In 2014, Buterin hosted a crowd sale for Ethereum, raising $18 million in only 42 days, which was equivalent with 32,000 Bitcoins at the time. On July 30th, 2015, the first block of data, or Genesis, was created and the Ethereum network was born. Mr. Buterin was a Bitcoin believer and he was inspired by its success. He said he chose the name because it refers to the hypothetical invisible medium that permeates the universe and allows light to travel. He wanted to build a system that would make it possible to program more complex financial transactions. The platform is used for the creation of decentralized applications or dApps as they're referred to, using what are known as smart contracts. Smart contracts are bits of code that automatically execute an action after specific requirements and conditions have been met. For example, sending a part of the profits to the investor after a specific date and time have passed. Why would anyone want to use this network? Let's take an example of two companies who want to conduct a complex financial transaction, like settling an option. How can they work together? Now let's say, that both companies don't trust one another to conduct a transaction on their own systems. Both companies might hire a third party, like an exchange, to conduct the transactions, which is what generally happens today. But what if you don't trust the third party 100%? Most of the time, they're still forced to pay the company fees. With Ethereum, they can conduct a transaction on a shared computer that allows them both to check the records, ideally saving on fees. Many banks are looking at how Ethereum could be used as a central operating system, replacing today's middlemen. Samsung and Toyota, for example, have experimented with Ethereum as a way to keep track of products moving through supply chains that involve many players. Dozens of large companies around the world today are working to develop versions of the Ethereum software that are battle-tested enough to be used in the corporate setting. So this concludes our first lesson. See you guys in the next one. If you're looking for personal guidance, become a member of Read BTC's great community and step into the expert zone. This will allow you to have the skills of an expert at your fingertips. And it's only $49 a month. So what are you waiting for? Start learning today. Because earning depends on learning.